We primarily talk about consoles here on this channel because I'm primarily a console gamer, but I used to build PCs back in the day. Lately, I've been more of a Mac guy, but what keeps me wanting a PC around is live streaming. I don't know if you've ever tried to live stream from a Mac before, but it's just a horrible experience. Also, it's been kind of nice to have a device that can play like Halo and Warzone at really high graphical power at my desk. I'm sure that you all know by now that it's pretty hard to get certain PC components right now, specifically graphics cards. Instead of building something this time around, I decided it was probably gonna be a lot easier, and in this case, even cheaper, to just get a pre-built. And this thing is pretty sexy. It's got all of the power of a gaming PC and a nice, neat little form factor, and it kind of looks like a console. This is the NZXT H1 Mini Pro. This is not sponsored by NZXT or anything. I purchased this PC myself. I just decided this was worth the video because after playing certain games on my Xbox Series X and S on some 4K 120 hertz displays, and then switching over to this $1,600 computer, I noticed a lot of similarities. In some cases, it's really cool to have a little versatile computer that's capable of a lot of stuff. And in other cases, why the, why the f do I even need this thing? This video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Oh! Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. You heard that? Oh, oh yeah, I heard it. My, my guy. Yeah, I bet. Oh! Okay. I'll just sit. Yeah, it's because you sleep like you fell out of a plane and that matches you have doesn't work right with that. What? No, I don't. Well. Yeah, yeah, I do. All right, let's fix that for you. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door for free in the US. You need a mattress that is perfectly tailored for you. They made the sleep quiz to match your unique body type and sleep preferences. You can also take the sleep quiz with a partner so you don't have to fight over the firmness. I'm a, uh... Yeah, I'm a stomach sleeper. And I like a somewhat firm mattress. So, based on my results, Helix matched me with the Dusk Lux. It's firm, but soft. It feels like I'm in a luxury hotel bed. It's awesome. If you're worried about the commitment, they have a 100-night sleep trial, along with a 10-year warranty. That's three months to make sure you love it. And if you don't, they'll pick it up for you and give you a full refund. So go to the link in the description below or go to helixsleep.com slash wolf for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress, plus two free pillows. And again, it ships for free anywhere in the US. Hey Bob, how's the new ah! mattress? The very fact that this video exists is probably gonna ruffle some feathers in the PC gaming community. Whenever I mention PC gaming at all, the comment section turns into like a swamp. Look, I'm not here to rain on anybody's parade. I'm just here to talk about my experiences. And in my opinion, there's plenty of great reasons to want to dump a bunch of money into a gaming PC. The most obvious one to me is that a PC can do a lot more than a console can. You can't like edit photos on your PS5. You can't open up 14 tabs of Twitter on your Switch. You know what I mean? If exclusivity ends up being a concern to you, well, most console exclusive games end up being released for PC anyway. So PC kind of has the most stuff. And if you feel like being a criminal, you can even get a lot of Nintendo Switch stuff. The reason why I've liked consoles so much is that the games just work. You don't have to worry about whether or not your hardware is gonna be able to run anything. You don't have to worry about tweaking any settings. And these days with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, the games usually perform insanely well. Just yesterday, when I was preparing for this video, I booted up this computer and a random DLL file was just gone. Where did it go? Who knows? Long story short, the computer ended up getting stuck in a boot loop. I don't know what happened, but today I had to do a clean install of Windows. It wasn't a big deal. I didn't lose anything, just a minor inconvenience. And something that isn't a common occurrence, it shouldn't be anyway, this is just a random thing that happened. I, I just got really unlucky. You know, it is a common occurrence though, that there's just always something, you know? 
Anyway, we should probably talk about the hardware on here. Oh, I should probably not hit it like that. I bought this NZXT H1 Mini Pro on Black Friday. I actually bought two of them, one for me and one for my girlfriend. We are long distance, so playing video games together is really all that we have. And I don't know if you've ever tried to play Warzone with somebody whose computer just can't handle it. When they lag out, they're taking you with them. This particular one has an eight core, 3.8 gigahertz Intel processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a 3060 Ti graphics card. The 3060 Ti is kind of on the low end of Nvidia's latest family of cards. Sure, it's not the most powerful, but it's way more than enough to stream and record gameplay at the same time, which is all I needed it for. It also plays games well above the quality that I'll ever need it for. And best of all, it was reasonably priced as far as PCs go. Normally, I'm all for just building a PC, and you can purchase the case from NZXT if you want to build your own H1 mini computer. But just the graphics card, the 3060 Ti, will run you around a thousand bucks right now. The cheapest I saw it was like 700 bucks, and I don't know if it's gonna be available for that. The ones that were available were a thousand bucks. That's most of the cost of this pre-built computer already. Then the processor is like, another 350 bucks, then the RAM is at the cheapest, like $100, then you gotta get the motherboard, you gotta get some fans, you gotta get a power supply, you gotta get the case, then it's gonna take you like two hours to build the thing, then you're gonna forget something, you're gonna have to run to Micro Center, then you're gonna miss your daughter's wedding. So as far as other alternatives, $1,600 is actually really cheap. Plus, the build quality is very nice. Other computers that are even close to this price range are usually from like, weird Chinese manufacturers and they got RGB everywhere and they look really weird. But if you're talking about console alternatives, this little guy, this guy right here, is just $300, which is like almost a fifth of the price of this thing and like a fifth of the size too. It's not gonna play Valorant or League of Legends or TurboTax for you, but it can play Warzone and Halo Infinite at pretty comparable specs, which is absolutely mind-blowing for something that costs $300. I'm not saying this is the most perfect device ever, but I will say you're less likely to have a driver randomly brick your console. This measly little 360 Ti does hold its own though. It's actually pretty awesome. If you haven't caught on by now, the only graphically demanding games that I really care about are like Halo and Warzone. The emulators that I play on here, or like the occasional Valorant or VR chat, they're not really graphically impressive. They're not testing the limits of the hardware as much as Halo and Warzone do. Plus, those make for a better comparison between PC and console. I have been able to get Halo running at a pretty stunning 4K resolution. It's 4K by default, and I was only able to get the frame rate to look good with VSync on, locked at 60 frames per second. That was also by default. I tried turning VSync off and raising it, but it had some major screen tearing, stuttering, and only really capped at 80 frames per second. So not really worth it. If I lower the resolution to somewhere around 1440p, the frame rate hovers around 100 and 120 frames per second, which is really good. There's some minor screen tearing, but it's not a big deal. If I drop the resolution down to 1080p, it does a really good job of hovering around 144 frames per second. Through DisplayPort, this monitor that I'm using is capable of 144 hertz. So it's nailing it. I could probably go even higher, but that would be a waste because my monitor can only do this much. Comparatively, the Xbox Series X can hit 120 frames per second when in performance mode. The resolution takes a bit of a hit. It's dynamic, so it caps at 1440p when in this mode, but can drop all the way down to as low as 960p according to Digital Foundry's tests. It still looks gorgeous on Series X though. Series S is a little more disappointing, only doing 60 frames per second at 1080p, even though the system itself is capable of 1440p, 120 frames per second. Some of the Halo test flights, the beta tests, had 120 frames per second available on Xbox Series S, so there's a possibility it will get an update in the future to enable this. Warzone isn't really optimized as well as Halo is, 
But regardless, it does a pretty good job. With dynamic resolution checked, this guy shuffles between 80 and like dips down to 50 when there's a lot of action going on at 4K. At 1440p, it gets a little more wild. It goes all the way up to over 120 and all the way down to like 80. At 1080p, we start to see the high frame rate. This one shuffles between 110 frames per second and all the way up to like 135. It also just looks like a little crisper on PC than it does on console. It still looks gorgeous on my monitors and still performs comparatively to this 360 Ti. I typically play Warzone on my Series X and I use my Series S pretty frequently when I'm traveling. I've always been impressed by the Series X's capability of maintaining a pretty high frame rate with Warzone, around 100 frames per second during combat and hitting close to that 120 frames per second when there's a lull. It outputs 4K, but apparently that's upscaled. It's rendered at 1440p. It gives these more expensive cards a run for their money. It can do Warzone at 120 frames per second with dynamic resolution. It's outputting 1080p. I don't know the exact resolution it dips down to, but it looks crisp to me. So I just said a lot of technical things, but to summarize, uh, this thing's a beast, but these things are also beasts. I've been having a lot of fun with this thing, but this thing has helped me to appreciate these things a lot more. Sure, it would be more impressive if I had like a 3070 or a 3080 or a 3090 in here. One of the most impressive things that I've seen recently is a 3090 playing Warzone in full widescreen. That FOV was huge, but those cards would cost me potentially an additional thousands of dollars. Plus, I'm not so sure that the marginal increase in frame rate is worth all of those thousands of dollars. Plus, this little guy was just $300. And it it's not that far off. Most of the time I'm playing my games on the Xbox Series X, and even that is just $500, which at the beginning of this console generation sounded like a lot of money. But now, after seeing all of the benefits of the trade-offs, that is a steal. It's also cheaper than just the graphics card is on this guy. So $300, $500, $1,600. Halo at 1080p 60, Halo at 1440p 120, 1080p 144. I'm willing to split the difference say because of dynamic resolution, this is more like around 1080p. So how much is that extra $1,100 worth it to you? Hopefully you're doing a lot of TurboTax on this thing to make up for it. As far as this NZXT computer goes, aside from that boot loop that I got myself into yesterday, it's actually been pretty awesome. I'm not trying to knock it at all. It's been perfectly fulfilling all of my needs. It's form factor barely takes up any room. I got a nice little desk mount for it so I can mount it under my desk when I'm not being too lazy. It handles streaming and recording gameplay way more than adequately, even playing certain games. It plays the games that I wanna play at way higher of a graphical power than I ever expected or ever even needed to. I don't intend to be doing any video editing on this thing, but it is more than capable of crushing through 4K edits if I ever needed to. There are some weird little quirks brought on by the weird form factor. I'm sure everybody's concerned about the thermals in this thing because it's tight and compact, but it actually runs pretty cool. The fans are dead silent until you boot up a game like Warzone and the fans roar up. Halo, not so much. Halo is a little more optimized, but even just in this menu screen, the fans are uh, the fans are working a little bit. One of the weirdest things about this design is that all of the I.O. is in the bottom. So if I wanna plug something in right now, while the computer's on, I have to, I have to, I have to lift the whole thing up. I just won't, I just won't plug anything in while it's on. This gets really annoying real fast. Luckily, when I mount this thing, there will be a little space where I'll have access to all those ports. The bottom also houses the Wi-Fi antenna. So if you have the Wi-Fi antenna screwed on, there's like no room for the cables. Also, your desk can completely block your Wi-Fi signal, which is a problem if your router 
is anywhere besides right next to your PC. Older models used to come with a longer Wi-Fi antenna, probably for this reason. I don't know why they went back to this nonsense. I suspect this is also the case with Bluetooth because my Xbox controller just did not work over Bluetooth. It was laggy and randomly cut out. It pretty much has to be hardwired. These are things that I can look past because again, as cool as it is that this thing can play games, I don't intend to be playing a lot of games on here. I intend to just use this for streaming mostly. I was just kind of impressed by this thing and wanted to talk about it. And it also made me more impressed by the consoles that I already have. Of course, in order to get the most out of your gaming experience, you're gonna need a monitor that's capable of these high resolutions and frame rates. It is a bit easier to find monitors that can do high frame rates and, and even high resolutions over DisplayPort. HDMI 2.1 monitors are still kind of hard to find. But getting a nice monitor and pairing it with any of these devices unlocks a whole new level to your gaming experience. It really does make that much of a difference. It's just kind of crazy to know that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on a computer to get all of that. And I know I've been saying that before when I talk about these new gen consoles, but now really seeing it and comparing it, I, I'm, I'm starting to understand it a little better. Anyway, what do you guys think about this NZXT H1 Mini Pro? This little form factor of a nice beefy gaming PC. Is this, is this something that fits any of the needs that you have? Also, what do you think about the power behind all of these new consoles? Have you ever decided maybe I might want to upgrade? Has anything stopped you from wanting to do that? Leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter and any and all this other social media garbage. Hey, thank you Helix for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out if you're in the market for a mattress or some pillows. And hey, of course, the most important thing that you could do to help support this channel is just make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that button is gray and not red. You can turn on notifications if you want to make sure you know when every single one of these videos is up because you can't just rely on YouTube's homepage. It's not going to tell you every time I post a video. I'm starting to post more stuff about all the different consoles and YouTube's going to think you're only interested in Nintendo Switch or something. And if you're feeling extra helpful, you can share this video with a friend, a friend who is maybe in the market for any of these types of devices. Maybe this could help them make a decision. Thank you guys very much. Have yourselves a good week.